Good evening, everybody. It's time for us to begin. Um, you know, I'm going to ask everybody, squeeze in, please. Yeah, yeah it makes the scene. It does make the singing a lot better. Um, okay, so everybody don't move at once, but... <laughs> Y'all squeeze on in. Let's share the love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got the stool up here for Asher. I, yeah. It's good to see everybody. Um, any updates? Additional announcements? Uh, let's remember, let's remember Melina. She'll have surgery. Is it this week? This week. Okay. And now we look more like a family. Um. <laughs> um. Well, of course you know uh, it's our singing night. Um, we're going to start off with our opening prayer. If Dale, you can go ahead and make your way up here. Or. <laughs> then uh, Asher's going to start us off. Y'all pray with me, please. Father, thank you, Lord, for this evening that we can return here to hear a portion of your word and sing praises to your name. Father, we ask that you be with Brother David as he brings us our message this evening. Be with the song leaders. We thank them for their talents, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, that those that are ill and unable to be with us, Lord, that you bless them and be with them be with our caregivers, Lord, and re remember those that that have lost loved ones. Father, we just pray, Lord, that you continue to be with us and, and, and bless us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your son who was so willing to go to the cross and, and die for us, Lord, and for our sins. Father, we just... <clears throat> Just be with us tonight as we sing songs and praise thy name. It's in your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen.
don't know what that was. Our God, he is alive. First and last verses. Number one. Oh, yes, I'm alive. There is beyond the ever blue a God concealed from human sight. He did his God with the news and framed the worlds with his great might. There is a God. There is a God. He is alive. He is It's a new skill to learn. You have to try to keep time and tap the screen. He did a good job. Good job, Micah. Very good. I know this is Sarah's request. She's been wanting. That's why, Micah, that's why Mr. James, I think, stands over here so he can tap left handed and keep time with right hand. I stand to praise you, but I my 
Firmly 
All right. Anybody familiar with this song? When Morning Comes? It's in our book. All right, that's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, we're going to give it a shot. I like that. I like that. Yes, we're going to give it a shot. Okay. <clears throat> yes, and that is the reason I stand over here for you tonight. <laughs> I was sliding, but now I'm tapping. I've seen how the coach. Patrick, you know, you set up tremendously with this. Appreciate it very much. Oh, hey. When we get to the chorus of this song, I think a lot of us will say, yeah, I'm going to do that. So that's, that's good. Yeah. I got, I got my shocks on in case I need some assistance. So y'all won't be able to hear it, but I'll be able to hear it in case I need it. Okay, let's try the first verse. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand. All the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better. Hey! 
remember that one? Okay, can we back up to the first one? Can I back up to the first one?
not tried to learn it till now. So <clears throat> how do we? Okay, it'll be good. Okay, let's try this. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. No words. Uh, oh, we don't have nothing on the screen? No words. Uh, it's, it's, hold on. Go back now. Wait just a minute. Okay, that's the second verse. There we go. It's not just Ted's.
Sometimes we get the idea that singing services aren't as important as morning services or a regular service, but I feast on these singing services. Uh, even as lighthearted as it is, it's such a joy. It lifts up our souls. When we think about the words that we're singing, we don't just sing just to pass the time, but we sing because... Singing is unlike any other act of worship. It's, it's an opportunity for us to express what's in our hearts in a way that we otherwise can't. It's worship to God. It's recognition of who He is, but it's also, it's also moving to us. And God designed it that way. What a, what a privilege it is. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil has a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. We have to be vigilant in our world today. Of course, vigilant means to be looking, to be looking around, to be circumspect, to have our eyes open as we're going about our day. I saw one of the most disturbing statistics I have seen in a long time this week. And the next slide, I share that with you. And it's something that we cannot have our heads in the sand, in the sand about anymore. Uh, for many years, the LGBTQ movement has been on the rise. And, of course, we've spoken up against it. And we've talked about the verses that show and that prove that God is against homosexuality, that it is a sin. And we've preached that we want to treat those who are dealing with these kinds of attractions and who are engaging in these behaviors with love and respect and not talk down to them and not 
treat them any differently, but try to show them the truth. Understand that it is a choice and it's something that can be changed, something that can be repented of. Romans chapter 1 is very clear that God does not approve of these lifestyles. But the numbers that this survey indicates should really wake us up. This was a survey that was done by the Gallup uh, group. Gallup does polls and, uh, and surveys and very respectable and they, they, their findings are, are accurate for the most part. Now this graphic that I got comes from Axios, uh, the website, um, if you want to go and try to find this. But what we're looking at here and maybe you can't see it really clearly, the, the, the words I know on the chart are very small, but these are the percentage of the different generations as they are labeled right now that identify as LGBTQ. Among those born before 19... I have to take my glasses off. 1946, it's 0.8%. Hardly any. Not surprising. Among baby boomers from 1946 to 1964, probably where many of you are, only 2.6% of the population identifies as LGBTQ. Among Gen X, my generation, Patrick's generation, 4.2. And that's historically about where the number has been. But once you get past that, among the younger generations, the millennials, those born between 1980 and 1996, the number jumps to 10.4%. One out of every 10 young people in that age group, one out of every 10 identifies this way. And then Gen Z, the, the latest generation to be identified, those born between 1997 and 2003, according to this graphic. One in five young people, 20%. That's not a small number. That is a number that has to get our attention. Young people are, are being encouraged to explore these desires. The images and the, the temptations are in their hands at all times. And what we're seeing is a generation that's confused. That does not know what natural attraction is. What natural affection is the way God designed us. And what we have to do as Christians, as the church in the world today, is be a place, be a people that this generation can come to, to talk, to, to find help, to learn the truth. I, I'm, I'm just blown away by this. One in five. That's, not, that's something we cannot ignore any longer. And these numbers have only skyrocketed in the, in the last three or four years, is my understanding. What we have to present to the world as Christians in the 21st century is a lifestyle that is desirable over the LGBTQ lifestyle. That's what we have to live. That's how we have to present ourselves. Showing between husbands and wives, between men and women, what true love is. Not lust, not a desire to fulfill those, those lusts of the flesh, but what true, selfless, married love can be. And I don't tell you this to, to shame any of us, but to encourage us to reach out to open up and to be realistic about the world in which we live. We can change this. This number can come back down. But if it's trending in this direction, I only see it getting worse in years to come. 
But the church has to be a beacon of hope. It has to be a light in the darkness. And we as Christians have to be firm on the truth. Think about those things this week and think about some things that we can do. Some people that you might know that are struggling with this and how we can help, what we can do to reach out to them and how the truth can change their lives. Tonight we want to extend to you the Lord's invitation. The waters of baptism are ready tonight. I don't know when the last time they might have been used here is. Yes, thank you. I saw it tonight. There we go. (laughs) Got to get used to that one. The waters of baptism are ready. It is a life-changing decision. Even if you've been involved in sin, the sin of homosexuality, even if you've been guilty of taking another life, God can forgive you. I don't know that any of us here or struggling with those have committed those kinds of sins. But we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And so tonight, if there's sin in your life that you want to be forgiven of, by God Almighty, you can obey the gospel. You can respond to the grace of God by being baptized into the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what you do when you obey the gospel, based upon your faith in Him and your repentance of your sins, turning away from that lifestyle, from those sins, committing to a new life in Christ, the blood of Jesus washes you free and clean from all those sins when you're baptized in His name. It's what these verses on the screen teach us. If you've never done that, please make that decision tonight. If you have, but you're struggling with something, there's sin, something that you need help with, some strength or encouragement that you desire from your brothers and sisters here, we want to pray with you. We want to help you in any way that we can. If you have need, won't you come forward while we stand and sing. Have your heart as we Anybody need to take some more supper this evening? Okay. Room 110 after services. After dismissed. Kind Heavenly Father, we're thankful for all the blessings of life. We're thankful for this beautiful Lord today that you've given us. And we're thankful, Father, for the opportunity that we had to come back out and sing songs of praises to you. We pray that our worship will always be pleasing in your sight. We pray, Father, that we will study your word. Thank you for your word, and we'll study it and 
teach others the plan of salvation in this lost world we're living in. We pray, Father, that we're mindful of the sick of this congregation, and we pray that you'll be with them, be with those that are watching after them, and pray that they'll do those things that'll help restore them back to better help. We pray that you'll bless those leaders of our country. We pray, Father, that they'll do those things, that we'll always have the freedom to worship you without fear, harm, or molestation. We pray now that you'll be with us as we meet over in the fellowship hall. We pray, Father, that you'll bless the food, that it be a nurse with our bodies and our bodies in our service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>